here we are out on the road in the Skoda Scala. This car was introduced back in 2019 and has been selling in its droves. And I wanted to find out why it was so popular. It got its name because Skoda wanted to make a step up into the family compact car market. And Latin for step up or step is Scala, and that's where this got its name from. There you go. Um, the actual Skoda company, well, that's been around a long, long time, and it, it started in 1895. A couple of guys started the company from the Czech Republic, as you probably know, it is a Czech Republic company. Um, it wasn't until 1925 when the Skoda Works company came along and bought that company off those two guys. Now, at the time, they were making munitions, they were making guns and ammunition and stuff like that. So it was a bit of a, you know, a step into the unknown for them and they wanted to make motorbikes and motor cars, which were very new back in 1925. Unfortunately, they probably didn't do the best job of that because 1970s and 80s, Skoda really wasn't a car company that you would, you know, be looking to buy a car from. It had a really bad uh, reputation for producing poor cars. That has all gone because in 1991, the big giant VW, the German giant manufacturer, decided to buy a little piece of Skoda. It could see that there was something there, that there was something maturing about this car company that's been around for so long. And it, in 2000, VW Group actually wholly owned, they bought the rest of the shares and wholly owned the Skoda Motor Company. There you go. A little bit of history lesson, a little bit about the name of the car, but what we really want to do is have a look around this car, see what it's like, and give you our review of the new Skoda Scala. Let's check out under the bonnet for the different engine and gearbox configurations. The bonnet release catch is down here in the passenger footwell. Obviously, if it's a left-hand drive car, it's going to be in the driver's footwell because they're not going to swap it around. It costs too much money. The actual bonnet release itself is in the middle there, and you will find that this is an extra, extra heavy bonnet, so you almost have to do that like a proper lift. Um, you've got your bonnet stay there. There's no, um, you weren't expecting struts. Come on, guys, it's a little bit uh, fancy for a Skoda. Um, however, you do get a decent little engine in here. This is the one litre three-cylinder engine. This one develops 115 brake horsepower. You can get it with 95 brake horsepower. So it's just that little option between the two. There is also a 1.5 litre four-cylinder engine that develops 150 brake horsepower. So that's your options. There was, before anyone says, what about the diesel? There was a 1.6 diesel that was phased out in 2020. So that's your options on your engines currently. Two gearbox options, you have a seven-speed automatic or a six-speed manual. There are five different trim levels with the Skoda Scala. The Scala S is your entry level, starts at around 17,550 UK pounds, and it's a pretty good spec for the money, I must admit. But you're probably gonna to wanna to jump in at the next one up, which is the Scala SE, or even the SE Technology. They're the next two up. Technology adds in a bit of tech. You're getting it to about middle of the range when it comes to the spec as well. This particular car I'm driving is the next one up. It's the one below the top of the range. This is the SEL. And this car will set you back from 20,800 UK pounds. So we're jumping up a little bit there. But you do get a number of things extra, which we'll talk about when we're looking around the car. I'll mention all those to you. If you really want to go for the all singing, all dancing, top of the range, most luxurious, most sporty, that would be the Scala Monte Carlo. It will set you back a mere 23,800 UK pounds. And to be honest, I think you're going to find enough spec on some of the lower range models rather than going out and spending that sort of money. The Scala gets foldy in the mirrors, so when you lock it up on the keyless lockable thing, you get those to pop in, keeps them nice and safe and out the way. You also get 17 inch alloys as standard. I think these ones aren't that bad looking. Round at the front, you get standard LEDs, both sides, obviously, and at the back as well. If you like a bit of metallic paint, this one's in a metallic blue, it would have cost you an extra 595 pounds. All in all though, I think the car's pretty good looking. Driving the Scala, especially the SEL, we've got a number of different driving aids on here. Um, we've got lane keeping, 
which is on all the time by the way so the minute you start the car that comes on in order to cancel that there is a little button up here on the right you have to push that and physically cancel it it can get a little bit annoying over shorter journeys where it's constantly trying to pull you from the white line every time you touch it but on long journeys I think it's it's quite a good thing to have um, you've got a cruise control on here as well so once you get the car set up on the motorway or if you're on a dual carriageway or something like that very easy to use it's just simple buttons it's so nice um, suspension wise very uh, very good damping on this car I've noticed that there is a sports suspension upgrade but I can't see why you would want to invest in that I think the standard suspension on this car is, is very very good indeed also the all-round ambience in this car there's no road noise no sort of real feedback I mean, we are on uh, the upgraded wheels on this. As I mentioned, these are 18-inch alloys on this particular car. I'd have thought they would make more noise, more road feedback, but I haven't heard any of that. Standard car comes with 17-inch alloys, uh, the standard SEL. We must mention that. That's what the car we are driving. Brakes, a little bit fierce, but once you get used to them, um, they're, they're okay. I'm, qu I'm quite happy with them the way they are at the moment. Economy-wise, now that's, this is a big one. Um, Skoda tell me 44 to 48 to the gallon. Real time, just over 53 to the gallon. Now, I don't think you can beat that. Not when it's overestimated. It's, it's actually coming in higher than what they've, they've estimated it at. So there you go. It's economical, it's friendly, and it's comfortable. Around at the back of the Scala. I think it's pretty good looking. You've got this lovely sweeping rear screen that comes all the way down and sort of wraps its way around these lovely LED clusters as well. Get a decent bit of aero, makes it look very sporty. That's what I think I'm trying to say. Got stop, well, stop light in there as well. You've got a digital radio on the top, wash wipe here, your big Skoda badge on there, and that's, you are apparently supposed to say Skoda. Um, but here in the UK we say Skoda, we've always said that. One thing you will notice, no exhausts, nothing coming out the back here. I have a feeling that they're trying to train us to get used to seeing cars without exhausts because of the electric revolution. There you go, just a little feeling. Let's have a look inside. First thing you'll notice, there isn't an electronic tail lift with this car, but you weren't expecting that. But one thing you wouldn't be expecting is 467 litres of boot space. Absolutely massive. You can park a bike in there it's so huge another thing you're not going to be expecting is what i'm going to show you next so i'm going to pop the uh, the little floor pan up there a full size yes a full size spare wheel with a jack and a wrench so you can actually jack this up and change the wheel genius that's how it should be that's the good old days that's how we used to have those stupid puncture repair kits they're useless they don't uh, forget it Go, that's the way forward. Trust me, you need a spare wheel, especially driving on today's roads. They're terrible. Um, there's no 12 volt adapter in this particular model, but I'm sure you can get one added if, in another model if you wanted it. There's some space here and here to put bits and pieces. You've got some tie offs as well. A couple of um, big sort of places you can tie bits off. You've got some shopping bag holders as well, one either side. So it's very practical. One thing is, and you know what I'm like, I hate parcel shelves. Now, don't tell me that they're very practical and they manage to keep all your valuables, you know, look secure. No, they don't, because I'm not going to carry my safe around in the back of my car, am I? Let's face it. But the one thing I always say is they are practical because if you can take them out easily, like so, which this one does, secondly, if you're about to put something in here and it's going to take up this much room, you can't put this back in, can you? What are you going to do with it? Now, we love these if they go underneath here. And this is where, in my opinion, Skoda can really score top points. Because if this goes in, I'm going to try, there we go, and it sits in there and that pops down like that. Bang, done. Superb. Absolutely amazing. That's what we love to see. Got rid of it, don't need it anymore. It's not in the, you know, not in the way. Haven't got to have it on your lap. Another thing I like, I do like a lot on this car, don't I? I like the way these seats just pop down like that. 60-40 split. So if you do need to get someone in there, you've still got a passenger there. Not a problem. I'm going to do this one in the very, very seductive manner like this. And push it down like that. Look at that. Check it out. Okay, a couple of little things. So nothing's ever perfect, unfortunately. This has a really large load, load lip, we call it. So whatever you put in here is going to drop down. It's about that much. It's quite a lot. And when you try and pull it out, especially a heavy suitcase, this is going to end up getting scratched. And it will get really scratched because you're going to constantly be pulling stuff in and out there. The other thing, which, you know, 
look at look at that seat there. It's a great big gap there. And as if by the magic, hello. What do they say about a black dog crosses your path? Whoa! Scary stuff. Anyway, let's carry on. The Skoda Scala comes with a three year or 60,000 mile warranty, which is pretty good. It'll cover you for all your parts and bits and pieces that you're gonna need if something were to go wrong. There's also a 12 year anti-corrosion warranty, which I think is probably one of the bigger ones. I quite like having that because if something does go wrong, you know, you can pop it back in and they will sort it out for you. After three years, you can go for the all-in service plan. Now, the all-in service plan is quite a clever thing that Skoda have come up with. Um, you get, over the next two years, an extended two-year warranty. You get roadside assistance. You also get two MOTs here in the UK. If you don't know what an MOT is, guys, basically, if you're not in the UK, we just get a check every year that's done by the government to make sure our cars are roadworthy so you're not driving around in what we call a jalopy. Um, so you get those two included. Um, you get two services as well, two major services. So, and that will cost you £32 per month. I think that is very, very worth it. And it's a nice way of extending that two-year warranty. However, if you're on a lease plan, you're probably going to be giving this car up after three years. The actual lease costs on this car are very, very good because the residual value in the car is excellent. So look at the lease plans, see what you can get with this car. If you're going to buy one for cash, then you know after three years, if you do want to extend another couple of years, it's available. Right, let's check it out in the back, what it's like for the passengers. And first up, you will notice how easy it is to get in and out of this car, because that door goes a really long way back and makes it nice and easy to get a car seat in, you know, baby seat, or getting someone who's a little bit old and needs a bit more room to maneuver to get in and out. I like that. Another thing I also love about this car is the size of this window. It's absolutely massive. And the good thing about that is that if you have children in the back here and they feel a little bit sick, that window is really gonna help being that big and much lower than your shoulder height here. Another thing with the Skoda, this whole window comes all the way down. Like in a lot of cars nowadays, it stops about halfway. In some of them, it only goes not even halfway down, but this one, I can assure you, goes all the way down to the bottom there. Really good, love that. Um, place up here to hang your jacket or anything else you need to hang. So grab handle up here as well. I'm sure we're not gonna be rallying this car or going off road at any speed, but nevertheless, it's quite handy to have. A couple of decent little courtesy lights, LED, which also makes a difference. Get fed up with, you know, car companies that just put those old fashioned lights in there. Stick a couple of LEDs in it, it looks much nicer, more tasteful as well. Let's have a look around. Well, first up, you do get recessed seat belts, which makes sliding across much easier as well. I like that. You do get the Isofix points, of course you do. And there is also Isofix points in the front seat as well. So you can get three seats in this car if you wanted to do. God forbid you had triplets. Um, these are the removable ones. I'd prefer to see them on springs, you know, the ones on springs, because inevitably you're gonna lose these at the end of the day and have to replace them. Otherwise you end up with some big holes there, which just looks horrible. Um, not over keen on the material in here. It's all right. I like the color and I love the style, but just not over keen on the material itself. I'm just wondering how it will behave when, you know, sweets, lollipops, ice creams, and stuff of that sort gets spilt on here. Will it clean all right? Don't want to test it, not my car. In the center here, you do get, I was quite shocked at this, you do get a nice armrest with a double cup holder. I was shocked at that because in the more budget uh, compact family cars, you don't normally get this. You normally just get a seat as such, like a bench seat. Another thing I've noticed, which is a genius bit of design, um, if you look here, there is a hole either side and that is where the seat belt bit goes in. And the reason for that is, you're probably wondering, well, why did they put a hole in there? I will show you, pop that in there like that. Now, when you pop this seat down, it doesn't get caught. Look at that, see? So you can bring it down, put it back, and it won't get caught when you push it back, because I hate that, because then you have to pull the seat down, you get where I'm going with it. All in all, it's quite a nice place in there, isn't it? I wasn't expecting this at all. Unfortunately, it's quite a high transmission tunnel in the middle and you don't get independent heating at the back. You still have to rely on someone up front to direct not only the amount of air, but the temperature and that that's coming in the back here. Mm, not a lot you can do about that, unfortunately. But let's see what it's like in the middle because I think, to be honest, you could get a lift home from the pub or you know up to about 30, 40 minutes. But after that, I think you're gonna start getting a bit of backache. Have you noticed something? Even when I'm sat in the middle, which is a little bit higher because it's a lot more dense in the fabric here, 
I've still got tons of room in here. It's one thing I've been sitting in this car and it really feels like so much bigger inside. It goes back to that TARDIS thing, you know, and it's, it's just like really nice and roomy. Anyway, that's what I think of the back. Um, it's up to you really at the end of the day. You do need to get out and sit in the back when you test drive it. That's a good little uh, tip for you. So with the Skoda Scala, you can opt for a number of different extras with this car when you're purchasing. For example, you could get yourself a nice panoramic roof in here, which would set you back an extra £1,350. Or maybe you go a little bit more practical on the extras and get yourself some all-round sensors on this car for parking. They'll set you back £435. And to go with that, maybe a reverse camera to be an extra £305. But one thing I really think are worth it because it finishes the look of this car are those 18 inch alloys that this particular car has. They are an extra £850, but again, I think they're worth it. Right, so up front, it's keyless entry and keyless ignition. However, there is still a uh, key on here just in case you need to manually get in, you know, get into the car if all the electric failed, for example. Um, where the key used to be is your start-stop button. Um, nice and easily located, you know, that's where you're gonna start the car. If you're in the automatic, which is what this car is, then you just put your foot on the brake and push the start-stop. If you're in the manual, you have to put it on the clutch to get it to start. Um, just for simple, really, and make sure it's in, you know, obviously in neutral. Okay, let's take a little look from the right, moving it across. On the far right, you've got your lighting panel, and this is where you can set up your lights. You can just put it onto auto, which is what I'm running it on at the moment. There are the front and rear fog lights as well. You do have to set them manually, obviously. To the left of that is a little scroll button. That's just next to the lighting panel itself, and that means you can raise or lower the actual height of the beam at the front of the car on the lights there. On the right here, you have a uh, little sort of ped, ped, peg. <laughs> it's where your wiper is. That's that's what it is. We'll, well, I'll come up with the right name. A stalk. That's the word. It's a wiper stalk. See, there's always something in my brain that I forget the word for right in the middle of trying to tell you what it does. On the left here, you've got another stalk. <laughs> always reminds me of one of those big birds that deliver babies. Um, a stalk over here, which is your cruise control, which is very easy to operate. You just switch it on and off at the top there, and then you've got a button here where you actually set the speed on it. All nice and simple. Love the display on this car. The, the actual instrument cluster is fully digital, as well as that 9.2 inch screen as well, TFT touch screen, we'll talk about that in a minute. Fully digital on here, it has different views. So if we go to the steering wheel bit now, just to make this a little bit easier to explain. On the right hand side of the steering wheel, you've got a little knurl button. Now, if you actually push the lower button there like that, you can start to change by scrolling up and down you can change what appears in the center. So you can have all different things, like you can have tire pressures, you can have the speedo, you can have oil temperature, engine temperature, all things like that. That's your choice there. And then underneath that is where you change the actual view, the actual look of that screen. So you can have it very minimalistic, you can have it very sporty, you can have it where you've got your speedo and your tachymeter together. So there's three or four different views on that as well. And that's all controlled down there. To the top, now one thing I should mention, this car is permanently, in the lane keepy mode, you know what I mean? Where it won't, where it picks up on the steer. So that can be changed there using that at the top. You can turn, so you just push that like that and then you can scroll up and down and take that out of lane keepy mode if it really gets on your nerves. To the left here, simple, that's your media control. So you've got your volume up and down and below that is your scroll left and right button. So if you're, watch, you know, if you're listening to the radio, you want to change radio stations, you can just change it there. I love the actual setup, that's all this is about. Steering wheel itself, well, manual adjustment, as you would expect, but bags and bags of different adjustment. Look at that, loads of maneuverability. Likewise with the seat, there's no electronic seats in this particular car. I do like that in a way because I can manually configure this where I want it, which makes things very nice and easy and simple. Um, let's start across the middle here because there's a few nice little bits in here. One thing I'm not over keen on is this cubby in here. It's absolutely minute. Um, you know, I've seen mouses' houses bigger than this. You just about get a mobile phone in there, just about. Um, but it does act as a decent, elbow, you know, somewhere, a little shelf to put your elbow on there. I like that. There's a couple of genius things here. Watch this. In here, in the middle, 
Okay, it's not the biggest cup holder in the world. It's sort of like a double cup holder and an energy drinks holder in the middle. It's more for sort of water and energy drinks, I will say that, but we have managed to get a medium sized coffee cup in here. However, something which I find genius, as I mentioned, is this little one here, because you know when you've got your water bottle here and it's fairly new and you've got to undo the top bit, or even if you've tightened it up too much, and you're driving along and you sort of can't do it because it keeps spinning. Well, in this case, you can actually, you know, push it down and there's some knobbly bits in the bottom that stop it spinning around. So you can sit there and you can actually undo the top of your water with one hand. That, that to me is genius thinking, absolutely brilliant, love that. Another thing which I love is the manual handbrake. We love a manual handbrake, look at that. Lovely, even sounds nice, <laughs> love it. Above that is your stall button as well. So it auto stalls, you can turn that off if it really annoys you. You know when you're in traffic, move forward, stop, engine cuts out. I know it's eco-friendly, I do, I'm totally up for the eco planets and things like that, but it does drive me nuts when it keeps starting itself all the time. This, as, I've, as you probably can realize, is the auto seven speed gearbox. There's your lovely big gear knob in the middle there. Very easy to use, just pull it down and go, as simple as that. Um, another thing, which I'll point out up the front here, are a couple of USB-C charging ports, and you do get one little usb adapter because at the moment none of us have really got USB-C's. It will become sort of the norm over the next few years so we probably won't need these anymore after that but at the moment you do need that. There is no wireless charging in here. I would like to see some wireless charging. It, that might come on the above level to this car. Um, who knows but it hasn't got one on this particular model. Um, one thing you do get on all Scalas is air conditioning as standard and this one is lovely and you know why it's lovely? It's got a knob. It's got two knobs. One, I, I love a knob, guys. I'm really sorry because um, during the winter when you get in here with your gloves on and, you know, it's freezing cold and you're fiddling around trying to change the temperature on your lovely TFT digital display, it's so much easier when you've got a knob and you go, it's really cold in here and you've got your gloves on. Don't take your gloves off. You just go full on, nice and warm, and there you go. Simple as. I think the simplicity of that says it all. Enough said about that. 9.2 inch touchscreen, really love this. Look at the quality of that. Another thing is, and this is what I said about Genius, this, watch this, is gesture control. There, look at that, how cool is that, eh? You can show off to your friends now, can't you? Another thing in this car, which is also very good, you get Isofix points in the front seat here, so you can have a third baby seat up here. So I think I mentioned when I was in the back anyway, but I'll just mention it again. I like the finish on this car. Check it out. It's really quality finish. Proper, proper quality. Um, glove box in here. You do get the obligatory owner's manual in here, but it is a small one. It's not a massive great book like you get in some of them. However, come on, we don't need these. You and all of us, you know, the people who buy these cars, let's get a petition going saying, do away with the owner's manuals. Give us a spare tire instead, or a you know space saver, because these cost a lot of money. And when you put that in there, it's taken up a lot of room that really you could do with that extra room in your glove box, because that's a decent sized glove box. There you go. As I say, decent finish on this car. Really nice indeed. And I'm loving all the bits and pieces. So, Skoda Scala, top marks. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Don't forget, like, subscribe and comment. If you've got any comments, please leave them in the box down below and one of us will get back to you in due course. If you do want to give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. I don't get a bonus, I don't get paid any extra, but it just proves to the bosses and the sponsors that you guys are enjoying what I am doing. So I'd really appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, that's great, thank you. Don't forget, leave the bell sign unchecked because you will get regular updates of all the videos that we put up. And at the moment, we're putting up between one and two videos a week. Now, they might be of interest, they might not, but if you've got the bell sign unchecked, at least you can make a decision on that one. Thanking you very much for doing that. Don't forget, before I go, there is one last thing. I always mention it. We are part of a much bigger organization. We are part of the player. Now, the player 
also encompasses a beautiful men's bookazine. A bookazine is a magazine with a hardback cover that comes out on the same frequency as a magazine, like every three months, every month, whatever that frequency is. Our one comes out every three months. It's 220 pages of what us guys absolutely love. Things like cars, boats, holidays, golf, food, interviews, you name it. Everything us guys love, all in the player bookazine. Now, if you want a free copy of that, there's no strings attached whatsoever because you watch me on AJ The Player YouTube channel. All you have to do is go to www.theplayer.co.uk. In actual fact, it's coming up here now and it will stay up there for a couple of seconds so you can memorize it. And then just go to the subscribe tab when you get to the main website. Just put your name in and your email. That's all we want. I'm not a data capture person. You can see that. And then you can either download it to your device or you can flick through it online on a computer, whatever you want to do. And it's completely free of charge. You can't get the hard physical copy. That is 100 UK pounds. You can order one if you want to, but if you want the free online version, that's all you have to do. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As I say, I will be back next week with something different. It'll either be another car, a boat, an interview. Who knows? I, even I don't know.